Are you having trouble winning 1v1 tank fights when your enemy has the same or a weaker class tank? Or are you having trouble against a heavier tank? In this video, we are going to go in depth on a specific topic of engaging an enemy tank and how there are things you can do to let you come out on top with almost every engagement. Beware there will be loads of numbers and graphs. Alright, happy Tanktastic Monday. Tanks in Battlefield 5 is mostly used for infantry support and to help your team push an objective. You use it to deliver heavy firepower against enemy infantry. This is even true on maps like Panzerstorm, where tanks are more common. But there will be times when you have to engage enemy tanks and that can be tricky since you may not be able to predict which class of tanks your enemy may have. There are many instances where you may be outmatched because you are using a light tank or a medium tank when your enemy is using a heavy tank. So today we're going to go in depth on the topic within enemy tank engagements. And within that topic, we're going to talk specifically about angles. I'm sure by this time you know there are weak spots on the tank and that the angle impact makes a difference on how much damage is dealt and that the more acute the angle, the higher the chances that the shell may ricochet. In this series, we're going to talk about a few things. We will first discuss how angle plays a role in defense, as in your own position, how it can affect the way an offense and ways you can manipulate your enemy to do things you wanted to do so you can deal even more damage as quickly as possible. Positioning, or defense, is one of the most important, if not the most important thing you need to think about when fighting both infantry and enemy armor. It is crucial to your survival and being aware of the way your tank appears to the enemy can make a huge difference. The key point in this section will be about armor angling. What it means is to turn the body of your tank away from neutral forward position. This increases effective armor thickness just like how sloped armor works in real life. In this game, this is reflected by the decrease in damage you receive depending on the angle of impact. The percentage of damage you receive will differ for every tank so we will discuss each tank in detail. I will not discuss armored vehicles, there are assault guns, tank destroyers, or basically armors that do not have a rotating turret, because none of those vehicles can effectively use this strategy. And because of that, they are at a disadvantage when it comes to this particular issue, but make it up with other areas that we will not focus on in this video. I will be talking a lot about damage multipliers, and for the ones who are not familiar with the term, it means that for a particular shell, it will deal the damage of that shell times a specific coefficient depending on the target tank class with a higher number for the light tanks and lower number for heavier tanks multiplied by the damage multiplier depending on which part of the tank you hit and at what angle. So to translate that in a simpler term, the same shell will deal more damage on the light tank when hit at a perfect angle on a weak spot. So let's start off with the light tanks and work our way up to heavier tanks. For the Panzer 38T and the Staghound, their armor values are the same. For front armor, it has a 0.2 times damage multiplier below 15 degrees to 1.67 times at 85 degrees. The turret will take 1.67 times damage at any angle and will not ricochet. So what can you do to increase the chances of survival? You can turn the body of your tank when engaging an enemy tank. And since the best will be to face them with the front or side armor, I'm only going to focus on these two. Here you can see a graph. The horizontal axis is the angle you need to rotate from the neutral position facing directly to the enemy tank. The blue line plots the damage the front armor plate takes and the red line plots how much the side armor would take at that specific angle. The objective here is to minimize the amount of damage you take whether your enemy decides to hit your front armor or side armor and that point will be the intersecting point of the two lines. So in this case, they intersect at around 42 degrees or so. This will mean that if you turn your tank 42 degrees either right or left, when the enemy tank hits you in the front or the side armor, you will only take around 0.6 times the damage. I'm going to stress that it is better to turn less than more, because if you turn more, the side armor line has a higher slope, and that means just a few more degrees would mean a whole lot of damage received. And if you did not turn and you take the shot right in the front armor, it will do almost twice the damage. And if you show the side armor to the enemy tank, it will take almost three times the damage. That's insane. So the magic number for light tanks will be 42 degrees. You'll probably say, how am I supposed to tell what is 42 degrees? 
Well, I will show you a specific way to estimate that after we go through with each tank, so just bear with me for the time being. So now you have the basics. I will go through each of the other tanks quicker. For the Valentine and the Panzer IV, the front takes 0.2 times below 30 degrees and up to 1.2 times over 80 degrees. The side takes 0.2 times below 30 degrees and 1.6 times over 85 degrees. The rear takes 0.2 times only up to 10 degrees and 2.2 times starting at 60 degrees. The turret will take a standard of 1 times damage at all angles. So translate that to the graph. Here you see the line intersects at around 44 degrees and so translating to around 0.55 times damage for the side or front. That's a massive decrease. How about the Tiger? The front takes 0.2 times up to 45 degrees, 1.2 times about 75 degrees. The side takes 0.2 times up to 30 degrees and 1.6 times about 75 degrees. The rear takes 0.2 times up to 10 degrees and 2.2 times about 75 degrees. The mantlet in front of a turret takes 0.75 times and the turret itself takes 1.25 times damage at all angles. Let's see the graph. Here, at around 37 degrees or so, it only takes around 0.45 times damage for both the front and the side armor. That's even more damage reduction compared to the medium tanks. Then you have the Churchill Mark 7. The front takes 0.2 times up to 45 degrees and 1 times above 85 degrees. The side takes 0.2 times up to 30 degrees and 1.6 times above 85 degrees. And the rear takes 0.2 times up to 10 degrees and 2.2 times above 75 degrees. The turret takes 1 times at all angles. The graph here shows that at around 36 degrees, it only deals roughly 0.4 times the damage for both the front and side armor. And the last tank, the Churchill Crocodile. The front takes 0.5 times up to 45 degrees and 0.6 times at 85 degrees. And at perfect 9 degrees, it takes 0.8 times damage. The side takes 0.2 times up to 30 degrees and 1 times above 85 degrees. The rear takes 0.6 times up to 30 degrees and 1.2 times above 85 degrees. The turret takes 0.6 times at all angles. The graph here shows that at around 50 degrees, it deals roughly 0.5 times damage. But here, notice the front damage multiplier line is rather flat, so it is actually not a bad idea if you decrease the angle all the way up to 30 to 40 degrees or so. If your enemy hits you in the front, you don't really receive much more damage, and if they hit your side, you get a further decrease in damage. So now we are done with all these graphs. Let's summarize a bit here real quick. All of the tanks mentioned above have the sweet spot that range from 36 to 50 degrees, and if you want to narrow that down a bit, they all perform very well at just around 40 degrees. Because it is not going to be an easy thing to judge the exact angle of your tank even when sitting still and trying to measure it using the compass in game or whatnot, imagine trying to do that in the middle of an engagement. So here, I'm sure you have seen this UI element at the bottom of your screen. If you use free look after you lock your turrets, it will show the direction you are facing straight up and not the barrel nor the body of the tank. But once you are synced up again to the turret, you can see that if your tank body rotated, the pentagon, which is the body of the tank, will rotate as well. Now, we said 40 degrees earlier is a sweet spot. So now when you see an enemy tank, tell them to hold on. Get out of your tank, go buy a projector if you don't already have one, put it on your screen and measure 40 degrees. Get back in, then proceed to shoot. No, no, this is ridiculous, I'm just kidding. Here, I have measured it out for you already. 40 degrees is basically just past the midline of the angled line here. It will have to be an estimate. So if you want to just bisect the angle here and put the barrel right in the center of the slanted line, you will already be at a significant advantage. If you want to be even more precise, just go a tad bit more past the midline. And for the ones who may have picked up on the detail while I was going through the damage multiplier earlier, my hat's off to you. So if you have noticed, the decrease in damage for the light tanks are not as drastic as that of the heavier tanks. You will also notice that the turret damage on the light tanks matches the highest possible damage at the perfect angle. So if the enemy tanker is smart, they would hit your turrets and turning your tank won't do a darn thing. Well, that's true to a certain extent, but this is only true if they can actually confidently hit it. And if they miss the turrets and hit the body of the tank, 
And there you go, you earned that little bit of hit point that might just let you survive another fight. Of course, there will be other things you can do if you're using a light or medium tank to help win the fights other than angling your tank, but that will be for a future video. So until then, have a tanktastic day and I will see you all in the next video. Also remember to hit the thumbs up if you like this video, thumbs down if not, sharing and subscribing are always highly appreciated.